Hi people, how are you guys doing? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. It is Sandra here and I'm back with another video that I am hoping is going to be an enlightening one for us, okay? This is Charlie Kirk Tears into Anti-Israel Students, okay? So I think I got into like a video of him previously where he was um i think he was he was having a debate with like an anti-israel student about like giving facts about hamas so i did get into that do check it out if you'd love to see that and know my commentary on that but this is going to be my first time getting into this one and um i am just yeah so we're going to be getting into this right now so put up your buckles people and let's just get right into the video it's not an israel thing i promise not to take up as much time as the last person no who was up here but um I'd like to open with a maybe like a little statement, which is that, you know, I'm not too partial to either particular side of the political spectrum. Um, but I think that a sad reality is, is when we talk about the Palestine issue, uh, it's the Gaza Strip is 50 percent people under the age of 15. Um, it's about two million people and about five to 25 square miles. And the reality of it is, is that Israel has said they're going to make a complete siege of the area. They've cut off electricity. They've cut off water. Um, and that's kind of a sad reality, and the reality is they also can't leave. There's only two ports of entry and exit. And so as much as you or others might be pro-Israel, how do we not condemn the Israelis for taking away resources like water from a population that's the majority children? Um, and, and at what point do we say that it's kind of an open genocide, right? Like. When, oh, when Israel, on. well, I mean, I, I know, I know it's easy to see. You, you realize on Saturday they killed 900 I, Jews, I'm not, right? I'm, I, mean, I, understand, I, I understand. One side's doing the genocide, the other side is retaliating. Well, one, well, one yeah. side's definitely swinging up and one side's swinging down. And I think that when you're a, when you're a strip of land in which all of your water, airways, and, and, and electricity is controlled by a state, uh, which you can't leave, and it gets bombed by missiles, I don't really think it's quite equivocal. I mean, obviously everyone here can condemn the killing of civilians, and that's not a debate that I'm, I'm going to have with anybody left or right. Sure. But, um, but at what point or time, you know, you say you criticize Republicans, but uh, why don't we ever cri like criticize Israel for uh, for what they're doing by turning off water? I mean, how? Well, well, I'm what, not going to criticize again. Let me just ask a hypothetical: if, if Cuba came to Miami and killed 50,000 Americans, would, should we cut off their water? Answer the question. No, if, absolutely not. Okay, I disagree. You you think we should cut off water to a to if the people? if the Cuban government came and killed fifty thousand Americans, which is the population equivalent, right? Sure. So nine hundred Jews would be fifty thousand Americans. Yeah, yeah. I would completely support war against a country that kills fifty thousand Americans. Cuba is the same, about similar distance, right? So yes, I would restrict. I would restrict food, water. It would be all out war against a country that touched our homeland. Well, you know what they call all-out war against a, a populace of people that are stuck in an area. It's, it's a genocide, right? And so as much as I No, hold on a second. No, no, no. First of all, if that was the case, why is Israel telling civilians to leave a certain area, number one? Well, if, only that if, are allowed if, to hold leave, on a second. right? Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. What? Like, are Palestinians allowed to leave the Gaza Strip? Well, they're moving to a different location of the Gaza Strip before bombardments happen. That's number one. Number two, they're already talking about humanitarian corridors being built. Did you know that? They're yeah. talking about humanitarian corridors being built with Egypt. So there's already a plan from both the Mediterranean side and the south side. But honestly, I'm not going to overly specify this because war is a really brutal, nasty thing. And you could say whatever you want about Israel. We're not going to agree on it, right? Sure. Israel did not invite this war. No, I, I don't think so either. Right, but, but just... they have to retaliate, and war is the worst thing humans do. Here's my prayer, sure. that Israel doesn't overreact. Americans don't send troops and that this is short and that the terrorists that did this are held to justice. That's what we need to publicly say. But I, I, I am not. And you're, you're right. There are kids that are going to die. That pains me. It should, the heaviness should be on you. But the answer is you just kind of roll over and allow people to come into your country, into kibbutzes, into concerts, and mowing down people and say, you know, get, catch you next time. I'm just not entirely sure what water has to do with the conflict, Mr. Kirk. I, I just don't see how the Israelis, it's the Palestinians, war. the PLO, and, and Hamas honestly, can use water. Two things. Here, here's, the, here's the issue. The Palestinian Authority is too busy spending $300 million a year incentivizing the slaying of Jews instead of actually going and purchasing water filtration services, you know, all, all sorts of different things there. Number two, so they build their headquarters under hospitals. It's a fact. Uh -huh. They use the entire population of women and children in Gaza as a massive 2.5 million person human shield. That's sick. There are no good solutions here.
There's not one that I'm going to say this is wonderful and beautiful and glamorous, and this is excellent. It's all crummy. It's all hell. And they invited hell. And something that we like to gloss over as Westerners is we get to live in a very peaceful society, relatively, and we don't realize that sometimes you need a Dresden. And that's a really hard thing to swallow. But guess what? What we did in World War II to defeat the Nazis was 100% morally defensible. And there were people that also died. Israel has a right to defend themselves, and they're going to retaliate. And Hamas, they brought this upon themselves. They were the stewards of those women and children. And as stewards of those women and children, they said, we don't care about the women and children enough that we're going to go into the other. They knew what was it. You're trying to tell me that they're shocked that they're getting bombarded and their water's cut off and their electricity is cut? No, they invited it. Final thought. Sure. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say they, but I, I do understand the sentiment, right? Okay. I, I do agree that Hamas brings it upon themselves. But I think we can agree. Here's what I will say. I do not think U.S. troops outside of very specific special forces to rescue Americans, which I'm sure you might be able to agree with, should be involved in this conflict. Yeah. We, can, we cannot allow ourselves to get into another Middle Eastern quagmire that Lindsey Graham and Nikki Haley and Mike Pence might try to get us into. That is something we can agree with, okay? So I really hope you guys can hear me, right? Because my mic went off. But this, as I expected it to be, has been rather, it was really enlightening, right? And to be honest, I I get where the college students is coming from because from a really sentimental value and a place where you literally put yourself in the shoes of just individuals going through this hardship that they have no control over and that they didn't bring upon themselves, is heartbreaking to be honest it's heartbreaking so you so one could be so sentimental and then lose focus of like the bigger picture right and you just focus on only one side of the picture and you just pour all your sentiments and all your emotions into it so i get where he's coming from and then obviously charlie obviously gets where he's coming from and like in as much as i mean it, it's a war okay People calling it a genocide is maybe, like, have they really researched on what a genocide is? And does it, does, does, like, the issue going on between Hamas and Israel, do they align in any way? Because he knows that Hamas brought this upon themselves. It's just like, I don't know. It's just like touching the tail of a, like, they're touching the tail of an angry lion, okay? You know... There's going to be retaliation. So if you made that decision, you are expecting a reaction, basically. To be honest, th this whole thing going on in Gaza is 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 heartbreaking. Like it is wild, right? It is like one of the most heartbreaking things going on on Earth right now. But then I feel like if so, if we're looking for blame, because I feel like most people are looking for blame more than a solution, right? The people who I have come to see, right? They're looking more for like who to blame, who to cancel, whereas they should be looking for a solution. They should be looking for ways to help. So for the people who are looking for who to blame, I feel you should blame the government, the people who are meant to hide and protect these people, these little kids that are going through like the worst experience of of the earth to be honest they should be looking at hamas why did they start a war literally they started a war and it's it's really wild to be honest because it has to do with innocent lives being lost and just innocent lives being disrupted from from the group it's it's it's, it's heartbreaking but um, I'm actually going to give it to the students because from the past students I've been, you know, experiencing with Charlie, most of them really just want to talk, right? Most of them just want us to hear them talk and maybe they want to feel like they have such immense knowledge, right? 
but this young man actually i feel like he had this piece which i already stated which is basically just from like a very sentimental angle he you know had this piece but he was very much open and patient right like i feel like he was he's aware right he's aware right and he is open to like learning and to know more facts and he was very patient like he actually let charlie speak whereas others just you know you know speak on top of him which just gets really irritating but this was actually enlightening and um sad to be honest because it reminds me of the reality of people and how all this that is going on all this talk all this debate is really it's not it's not even what really matters to be honest it's a solution to be honest that's just that's just it but I want to say thank you all to everyone who must have seen this video to this very end. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I really hope that um, we just, I don't know, we try to find ways to be of help, find ways to aid these people and spread the war. Because funny enough, some people really do not know what's going on in Gaza and they don't know what's going on between Israel and Hamas, okay? So with this being said, people, um, I'll come to the very next one. Let's keep on staying safe and have a great day. Bye.